We're inside four weeks to the election, and as we've seen on the national stage, political fortunes can change in the span of a single debate. So here to help us sort through the methods and the messages in this week's New Mexico PBS debates, former U.S. Commerce Department official Jamie Estrada returns. We missed you. From the Albuquerque Journal, Washington Bureau Chief Michael Coleman makes his annual fall visit. We love that. Editor of the New Mexico Law Review, Sophie Martin, is here. And former New Mexico House Whip, Republican Whip specifically, Dan Foley. Let's start with the first congressional uh, district race, the debate we had right in the studio, right where we're sitting, uh, same area, Sam Donaldson hosting brilliantly. Janice Arnold Jones and Michelle Lujan Grisham. Now, a little context. Ms. Grisham in the latest polls looks like she's up about 15 points. Mm -hmm. She's up a bunch in the money. She's up a bunch in every other factor you can think of. Did Ms. Arnold Jones come in here and do some things to chip away at this, or are we at status quo? You know, I really still? don't think so. I yeah. think that this is an example of a debate where we got a good opportunity to see both candidates, hear what they're about, but I don't see this particular debate shifting people toward uh, Janice Arnold Jones mm -hmm. or away from Michelle Lujan Grisham. Mm -hmm. One thing that we did see that may have been surprising to voters who haven't really been checked in on this particular race is that interesting moment in which Sam Donaldson asked Janice Arnold Jones about the support of the Republican Party. And she expressed dismay that she, you know, her perception, and I think it's the perception of many of us, that she's not getting the level of support that would have been, let's say, most helpful to her as mm -hmm. a candidate. Mm -hmm. um, if you had not been paying attention up to that point, you might have been surprised to learn that the very popular Governor Martinez has not really thrown any weight behind mm -hmm. Janice Arnold Jones. Mm -hmm. Interesting, Jamie, about that. The, the Wilson, Heather Wilson people uh, have a similar take on that, but we'll leave that aside for a quick second. Ms. Arnold Jones actually was trying to make some hay, I, I was interested in this, about Ms. Grisham being a lifelong bureaucrat. Mm -hmm. It was interesting to hear that because that was a charge one would hear like a cycle or two ago, what it was mm -hmm. deadly to be a lifelong mm -hmm. bureaucrat. Right. Right. Did she answer that charge fully in your view, Ms. Luhan Grisham, or does that stick anymore? I think it sticks okay. because I think the electorate still is hungry for fresh faces in the public. And, and frankly, Michelle Luhan Grisham, even though she is a, a, uh, was a county commissioner, mm -hmm. It's not like she's been an elected official. So the people, I think the electorate makes a little bit of a di uh, distinction between people that have, have, have a public service background, mm -hmm. either in appointed roles or all that, like she has, mm -hmm. versus you know, someone that's been an elected official over time. And that's what I think many of the, uh, uh, the electorate sort of says, well, you know, sometimes I don't want people that are. But does it, does it mean anything when Ms. Grisham says, I've been that person through two different situations, both Republican and Democrat. Does that make a difference? It does, but it also raises the point about a record. Uh, you know, so you still accumulate a record as a bureaucrat. And I've noted that Janice Arnold Jones rolled out a website called the Michelle Record. Dot com, I guess that you can go to and go look at all these things that Michelle has allegedly done in her in her uh, career as a health services mm -hmm. professional or mm -hmm. even in her legal career and as a county commissioner that that voters might be interested in if they want a little bit of more history about Michelle's record. So uh, I, I think that that's interesting that that's being brought out mm -hmm. right now. Michael, interesting how uh, uh, Jamie just mentioned the Fort Bayard situation. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be, for Ms. Arnold Jones, probably the, the toughest card she could have thrown that night. Any damage there, in your view? I don't know. I mean, I think that uh, uh, Michelle Lujan Grisham did a pretty good job of answering that question. She went, you know, on the front lines and, and did her thing that was really sort of uh, interesting and, and uh, you know, kind of a courageous uh, effort that she made. Um, in the so, face of being accused of people dying and immunization rates dropping on her watch, those are tough charges. Right, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, you know, I think that she, she acquitted herself pretty well of that charge, and I don't know that that uh, really stayed. We, we've written about it and tried to get to the bottom of it, and uh, you know we'll see what the voters have to say. Yeah, in your overall sense of the race for this district, we've had a lot of history here of Republicans who have been moderate and held that seat for a long time. A Democrat, most recently, of course, in Martin Heinrich. In the tenor of the times, a, a Democrat does that work for this district in, in some overall way better than Republican or vice versa? It's getting it's tougher for a Democrat yeah. in this district, obviously. It's become mm -hmm. more urban. There's more and more Democrats. Uh, it's getting tougher de for Democrats. I mean, for Republicans. Okay. I'm sorry. I, mm -hmm. I apologize. Yeah, for, for Republicans. So, um, you know, we'll see. Janice Arnold Jones has a long uh, uphill climb to make. Uh, I think she I think she did well the other night. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, she came across as articulate and informed. Mm -hmm. um, she has a little bit of trouble with sort of getting to the point in her sound bites. But uh, mm -hmm. overall, uh, you know, I think she didn't, she didn't hurt herself. Sure. Dan, Ms. Arnold Jones would never be accused of not being committed, passionate, smart. I mean, she's a lot of different things. What she hasn't been since her legislative career, however, is a winner, meaning winning something. 
And there's a way to, to lose in this game. You lose on the upside, you can lose on the downside. If, in fact, she does lose this race, is she leaving a good legacy of comporting herself through this? I don't, I, I don't think so, and that's because, and I say that basically, basically based on numbers. Okay. Not her actions, not what she's doing. I think she's running a great race. Mm -hmm. I think she's doing the best she can do. Um, you know, not feeling like the Republican Party is supporting you. The people have to realize there's only so many resources. Mm -hmm. And you have to start strategically placing those resources. But it's clearly, the first congressional district. Clearly right now in New it's the House. Wait, wait, wait. It's the House of Representatives. How do you not get behind someone in a race for the House clearly, of Representatives? Clearly, as we're seeing in the polls, mm -hmm. this is a 12, 15, 20 point gap seat. It's almost as futile as going after Ben Ray Lujan and the other deals. So you have to make sure you keep Steve Pierce. You have someone fighting for a U.S. Senate seat. You have an opportunity to take over the legislature. You have a governor that's saying, I think we got a chance to win the House and the Senate in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. All at the same time, you have to figure out how to put those resources strategically in the right places to get the most bang for your buck. They feel it's the legislature. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're in this situation, I think, because of redistricting. I mean, what's made this district, you know, more and more liberal is the drawing of the pen. That's what does it. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to control all of that stuff, you got to control the legislature. Mm -hmm. And so I, th I think. Let's turn Jamie the, back in and just to finish up. Sorry, but they're a little tight on time. Sure. Is that fair to Janice Arnold Jones or anybody in this position to be running for Congress and it's like, well, it's all parceled this way and that way? How come she doesn't make the mix early, right? So put money, if money came yeah. early, yeah. support came early. You'd make, you think it'd make a difference? It would make 15 it, possibly, it could, right? How? It could, but. Give me an example where that would happen. Well, I'm gonna, I mean, Jamie, well, look, that look, look. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's not just the local. Uh, groups that make these decisions. It's a national group that looks at the entire map and says, okay, where do we need to maintain our majority in the mm -hmm. House of Representatives to make sure that John Boehner is reelected as Speaker of the House? Mm -hmm. And so those resources, you know, that's, that's where a lot of this comes from, I think. But I do think that in many ways that Janice has gotten the short end of the stick. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that there have been people that have not supported her. But she does have a lot of support from people like John Sanchez, mm -hmm. um, who's doing, doing a fundraiser for her. Mm -hmm. um, some other prominent Republicans are involved in that as well. So I don't think that, you know, she answered the question in the, in the, sure. in the debate that, oh, you know, it's too bad I'm not getting a lot of support without actually looking at the kind of support that she does have. Sure. The ones who are supporting her probably feel like they're not very supportive of if you <laughs> right, say, right, right. I'm not getting a lot of support. Well, what about the guys who are doing? It's, you know? it's human nature to sure. look at a little yeah. negatively. Sure. I want to finish with uh, the third, actually. Uh, ben Ray Lujan and Jeff Byrd was right. here. We had a, ch had a chance to sit down with both. And uh, no one's expecting Jeffrey Byrd to come out and, and you know, clobber right. a two-term two incumbent. But at the same time, same question about Janice Arnold Jones. Is there a way to lose this thing that helps him in the future? In, in some manner in that district. He's a rancher, he's of right, it. Right, yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 all indications are that he's he's in bad shape. And, and you know, the, the debate, he, you know, he came across, I think, as sincere, as, as likable. He, he uh, um, I think he, he means well, but, he, you know, he's a little bit nervous. I think, you know, he's new to this. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Ben Ray Lujan has, has done this a couple times. He's, he's been around the block. Uh, he, you know, he, he can be a little predictable. He, he, he likes his talking points and he sticks to them. And yep. I think that's a little bit frustrating as a reporter sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, uh, but, you know, I mean, I think, came across as like, well, whether or not this is positions himself or something uh, down the road, I don't know. Add to that, Dan, if you would. That's well, I think, I think, you know, the, the, the only way, as I was saying earlier, you know, Janice ran for governor, I think she got 3%. And so on a statewide race, it's hard to get people excited about you. What can Jeff Byrd do is your question. He has to run better than predicted. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. if he's yeah. expected to lose by 15 and he loses by 14, that's something you can go to the voters with. That's something you can go on a statewide basis and right. give me a chance. I think what we saw with Jeb Bird last night, I agree with Michael, sincere. I think what you saw was a county commissioner. I think what you saw was a state representative. Sure. I think you saw a guy that, that has empathy and passion, compassion for where he lives, what he does, the role of his job in government. And I think what he's probably set himself up well for is to be a county commissioner sure. or a state representative, something at a, at a, at a level like that and you where build I think from he can that. make an influence. Mm -hmm. Then you learn and you try to build from there. Well, it's a tough place yeah. to be a competitive third, it is. isn't it? Yeah. It's awfully tough. It really One quick note, though, as we record this, viewers in our area haven't yet seen the second debate, second congressional district debate, sorry. We'll catch up with that next week. And we'll also have a bonus discussion online as this panel talks about the political attack taken by Governor Susana Martinez, mentioned a little bit earlier during this cycle. Now, in a moment, one-on-one -on -one with Congressman Ben Ray Lujan.